have a dinner. Yeah. And that's the way we should be. Now, as a young man, I remember a lot of happy music and songs on the radio and music and other places. But today, what we hear mostly seems like it's painful and discordant stuff. And that there's some happy music today, but so much of it is sorrowful. And there's a reason for that. Every morning when I get up, there's a little bathroom in our bedroom, and I go in that bathroom, and I look out the window, and I look up at the sky, and I said, good morning, Father. Thank you for being able to get up and look out this window and to see those birds in the trees and flitting back and forth on the wires. And it seems they have no worries. They are chittering and chirping and tweeting and going on and singing to beat the band like they got a burst sometimes. They go, and boy, it really sounds good. And it actually takes me back to a time. I was, a, I was born in the country, and there were lots of birds. And you, you could hear that all the time, but you don't hear a lot of that in the cities. So, uh, but uh, these things seem to be just bursting with joy, as I said. And God provides for their needs. And uh, seemingly, they understand that. But uh, what is joy? Uh, joy, or to rejoice, has several Greek words that apply, and, 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 and they apply in different ways, and there are several different ones. And I'm going to see if I can cover some of it. You frame the old. You for sign means to be glad or to rejoice and, and to enjoy with emphasis on the mood. So we're talking about a mood. Our joy is, is, a, is a mood. You see sour faces and people who are disgusted and downhearted and unkind. I know I used to go to work and I walk into the office of the shop and the uh, assistant chief would be sitting at his desk. And I said, good morning. What's good about it? And I'm looking at him, you know. And I said, you're breathing, aren't you? So that's, that's a good reason to be rejoicing. Okay. And there are several other words. C-H-A-I-R-O. I'm going to spell these things most of them for you because it's uncomfortable for me to try to say them. And another one is char, Cairo, means to, to rejoice, joy, to rejoice with. And so we are to rejoice with somebody, with each other and with our God. And now we should be joyful just like the birds. We have every reason to be joyful and to rejoice, even when circumstances are bad. When things are bad, there's a reason for things to be bad. And we learn and develop with those things. So there's a reason for us to rejoice. Uh, and uh, there are lots of uh, scriptures that I'm going to be using primarily in this that are joy or rejoicing scriptures. So, so why joy? Psalm 16.1 Keep me safe, O God, for you I have refuge. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely, I have a delightful inheritance. That's a reason to rejoice. I will praise the Lord with, uh, who counsels me. God gives us guidance and counsel, and that's a reason to rejoice. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, and will not, I will not be shaken. And it goes on and it says, Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will, uh, will, will, will rest secure. So all of this is reason for us to rejoice and to be happy. Um, I'm going to skip that part of it. It says, You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasure at your right hand. So this is talking about now and the future. So that's
that's a reason to rejoice, even though we're suffering and we're having problems. But in Romans 5, 1 through 5, and uh, we rejoice because uh, we have been justified through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom we have gained access by faith into His grace, this grace in which we have, which we now stand. And we, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So there's always a reason for us to rejoice. And we, we should have our minds focused on the future and on the knowledge that God has given us and all of the things that He's given us because we know that even though things are bad and we suffer and the world itself seems to be, and it is, falling down around us. But God is with us and so we we have that reason to be thankful and we rejoice. Not, so, not, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. And so each one of these steps helps us to develop and to grow and to become what God wants us to be. And in uh, 5.11, Romans 5.11, it says, Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom we have now received reconciliation. And the whole world needs to be reconciled to God so that the world will have the knowledge and the truth and rejoice in the fact that there is real life and real good and not the problems that are here today. Psalm 71, 23. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing to you, and my soul which you have redeemed. And then in James 1, 2 it says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And there's a joy in knowing the outcome of the situation. Now I'm going to make the this particular script is 1 Peter 1, 3, 9, so much personal. I've changed a couple of the words to, to make it fit us. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish for our faith kept in heaven for us, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. So that salvation is coming. And God has it for us. It says, In this we greatly rejoice, though now, not now for a little while we may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. And so we're going to have trials and suffer a little bit, but God is here to take care of us and to make sure that everything works out all right. These have come to come to our these have come so that our faith of greater worth these have come so that our faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though uh, refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Christ is revealed. And though we have not seen him, we love him, and even though we do not see him now, we believe in him and are filled with a, an inexpressible and glorious joy, for, for we are receiving the goal of our faith the salvation of our souls. And so this is, is, is the reason that we can rejoice even though we're having sufferings and trials and so on. And there are others that go on and tell us other things. Romans 5, 11, I think I read that. Okay, Romans 12. We, we have to encourage each other and help each other to have joy. When, when someone is suffering, whether it be our brethren or whether it be our neighbors or our somebody else. We have a couple of neighbors that are not well, and my wife is this old lady next door to us. I thought she was an old, old woman, and her sons were as old as, were as, old as me. Come and find out, we were talking about age one time, and I never told my age, and she said, well, it's one of the about her age, and I told her about, and I said, well, I finally told her my age, and she said, I'm, uh, you're almost as old as me, <laughs> and, and we called her mama. <laughs> but when she goes over and visits with her and talks with her, and her daughter died recently. Oh. And uh, so she uh, she's kind of lonely. And she'll say, come over and talk 
Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. And that's when, you know, that the glory of God will be fully revealed when, when Christ returns. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as the murderers or thieves or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. So we ought not to be meddling in business and in the affairs of people uh, in a way that is not good. We should, we should be careful what we do and how we do it. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you uh, bear that name, the name Christian. And finally, Psalm 98, 4 says, Shout joyfully to the Lord.